If one report was important in the way environment was considered, it is the Meadows uh, report called uh, Limits to Growth. Note that in French it was called Stop the Growth, which means there is some difficulty in understanding the message. Just to uh, remind you, it was 1972, first summit in Stockholm, and there will be two more reports. Report of our planet, the limits of Barbara Worth and René Dubois, an informal report on the summit regarding Earth, and then the English Blueprint Survival Report, which will be about placing the environment at the heart of our concerns. But the Meadows report plays an essential role because it provides a method and it will initiate what was later to be called uh, sustainable development. We understand the architecture of the report. There are four elements within the model. The first element is the uh, sponsor, the uh, Rome Club, Club de Rome, an informal association managed at the time by uh, Aurelio Recci who came uh, from Fiat, he was an administrator in the Fiat company, and then Alexander King, former director of OECD, and this think tank, this club, wanted to think about the future, the future of our planet Earth and the capacity for Earth to absorb the overload, and they sponsored an independent report called the Meadows Report. Next, the second element is the simulation. The first time that a model is based on a computer-generated simulation, there were several models, World 2, World 3, World 2000, characterized by the fact that it was all about uh, providing figures with data processing and raw data based on a demographic system, an industrial system, also the urban system, so a set of systems, trying to understand what can be the long-term consequences of our economic growth for planet Earth. The third element is the institution working on the Meadows project, MIT, with two important people, Jay Forrester, who worked on cybernetics systemics. The point for him was that he wanted to make a model with scenarios, perspectives, and finally Dennis Meadows, who uh, wrote the report and tried to provide a scenario that could be feasible for the f next 40 or 50 years. And contemplated. And finally, the method which uh, set, started the discussion, systems dynamics, are based on a specific type of calibration. We think not in terms of rings in the system, but the loops, the connections between the rings, the links. Retroactive loops may amplify a phenomenon. Stabilizing loops will reduce the amplification of the phenomenon. Now, in a nutshell, the uh, scenario was that of a disaster. The uh, report says that uh, the natural resources will be gone in a matter of decades, copper, iron, fuel, and that uh, our growth is not unlimited and that there are factors, limiting factors, that need to be defined. The report refers to the system which, collab which will collapse by the year 2020 or 2030. And this rings a bell for many economists and scientists. And the first who react to the scenario, the disaster scenario, were the economists. One economist triggered the whole discussion called Hayek is a liberal economist who was awarded the Nobel Prize in 74. And during his opening uh, speech, he said, I am quite surprised that this uh, report makes a lot of buzz and nothing is said about the people who criticize the report. Hayek, on the picture is on the left-hand side, quoted two sources, Beckerman, who wrote a book in which he uh, des described the Meadows scenarios and discussed them, and another economist, Haberler, and Haberler was the one who uh, found all the tricks in the report, everything that was wrong in the way the models were understood, and especially the method, the systemics method. But one year later, in 1974, economists started replying in a very strong way way to the report, their reply actually led to no difficulty in understanding the report for the economists. It said, okay, if there is no more fuel or oil, 
Well, never mind. We will replace uh, expensive uh, fuel or oil with a cheaper resource. Any resource can be replaced by another resource. So natural resources are a production factor that may be replaced. And because they may be replaced, our production functions become our replaceable functions. And we understand now the point because the economists thought that an expensive uh, production factor could be replaced by, replaced by a cheaper production factor. And if that didn't work, they trusted innovation. They thought that innovation was going to rescue us from the disaster. So the uh, Meadows report was written in 1972. In the meantime, there have been two more reports, one in 1974, one in 2002. In 2002, people started talking about over shooting, overheating of the system. The economists claim, and not just the economists, also the scientists, but the report claims that in 2020, 2030, the, contem the scenario which was contemplated in 1972 became uh, unavoidable. And in 2012, Dennis Meadows came to France, to Paris, to present not a third report, but the future of our society. And the third so-called report, or something that was considered as a report, was generated by Graham Turner, who worked on Meadows' report to write his own, and substantially what he said was that we had started an overshooting wave, that we could not avoid a peak in 2030 where growth would lose steam and population started, would start decreasing. Well, we can always criticize uh, the fact that he referred to a disaster, but ever since the last 50 years, a number of scientists have been pointing out that there is a problem today. How do we redefine the, report, the relationship with growth and how do we redefine a new socio-economic model?